an insulin pump and CGM all in one. That is the ultimate goal PharmaSense has with its line of tubeless insulin pumps called Nia. Welcome to the show. I'm Justin. I have type 1 diabetes. And on here, I talk all things diabetes tech, news, and beyond with providers, tech leaders, and those thriving with diabetes. PharmaSense's pump, Nia Essential, is with the FDA and it's awaiting 510k clearance. I spoke with PharmaSense's CEO and the head of business development about what is coming next for this round patch pump, how its reusable parts work, and how the future models will function. There's the Nia Advanced, which will connect to a CGM, and the Nia Signature, which will include a CGM in the device altogether. A couple announcements. We now have a free community discord for all of you diabetes to talk tech and support one another. We also have a Patreon where I release exclusive interviews and behind the scenes clips. In fact, I just put up a video teasing the implantable insulin pump I saw at Medtronic. You can subscribe and watch that video and sign up for the free discord with the links in the show notes. Keep in mind that anything you hear on this podcast or any of my content is not medical advice. Always consult with a physician before making changes to your healthcare. Today's episode is sponsored by T1D Exchange. You can directly make an impact on diabetes healthcare, treatments, and technology by participating in the T1D Exchange registry. It starts with a simple survey about your life with T1D, and it only takes about 15 minutes. After that, you'll have a personal portal with ongoing T1D study and survey opportunities. Plus, some of these studies even offer compensation. Signing up with the link in the show notes helps support my channel and it allows me to continue putting out free content. You can sign up at t1dexchange.org slash diabetic or click that link in today's show notes. Marcel and Anna, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. Thank, thank you for having us. <laughs> thank you very much. Of course. It was it was great meeting you at ATTD. We got to put together a little video. Anna, you were in the video showing off the, the fill process of this pump. So if people want to go check that out, uh, that's up on YouTube. Before we hop into, you know, all about this pump, can you tell me a little bit about the story behind PharmaSense? Yeah, maybe you can. Yeah, um, PharmaSense has been the, um, founded a couple of years ago and uh, the first the first thoughts were, were about uh, a sensor. So um, the founder wanted to have a, a glucose uh, a CGM system. So that was um, the, the first um, step. Then they figured out that uh, it might be a nice thing to have uh, both together. And so um, that, that was uh, when the when the vision was born. So to have both together, to have a CGM and a insulin pump in one in one housing. And then uh, um, they developed this technology around um, insulin infusion and a CGM system. And in 2020, the company decided um, not only to develop that technology, but um, bring it to market. So um, that was uh, when we came into on and myself came into the, the company and then uh, we we have built up the current uh, product development team bringing that development from earlier days um, to the market so that's um, yeah that's a little bit about our background wow that's so interesting i didn't know that that it originated as a continuous glucose monitor company mm -hmm. does mm -hmm. that mean that you have a bunch of r d in that sector already that will eventually go into this pump I would say, and not not technology, uh, the technology itself, but um, we have um, experienced people from this time. So we have um, people which have been working year, um, a couple of years on uh, sensor technology. So we understand sensor sensor technology and we know um, how to integrate it. We decided last year not to proceed with our own technology because, uh, as you know from from, from other competitors, um, it takes years to get um, up to uh, to to. Um, high quality results and uh, it's a long way. So we decided to um, to stop our intern, intern um, development, um, but decided rather to um, integrate an existing technology. So that's... Where does the name Nia come from with two I's, N-I-I-A? I, I think uh, the idea was that uh, people often name their pumps. Mm. Uh, and uh, so we wanted a, a, a name and uh, Nia means the the enlightened, right? The bright. The bright. Yeah. And we looked for a word or a name that could work in many languages. 
No, it's very complicated. Wow. More, more complicated now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. So in, in November 2023, Nia received the ISO 13485 certification. Can you explain to everyone what that is and what that means? Yeah, the ISO um, 13485 um, certification is, is a certificate for the quality management system. So we have received a, a certificate for the quality management system of Pharmasense um, in development, manufacturing and uh, supply um, insulin pumps. So that's, um, um, that's um, during that time, TÜV has um, um, reviewed our company and um, to, to very every detail. And um, yeah, we're concluding that um, we fulfill standards. We fulfill the standard 13485 and um, get the certification for um, development and manufacturing of insulin pumps. So it's not the, the certificate directly for the pump, but it's for the company. Yeah. Okay. And does that help you in any way with CE Mark or FDA clearance? Does it speed anything up? Uh, it's mandatory for a CE Mark to, for us to have the CE Mark for the product. First, the, the company must have this ISO 13485, and then you can apply for a CE Mark. So it's the foundation, let's say. And FDA, okay. not and really, so actually. It's, uh, it's a great quality system to work towards um, within this quality system, but it's not mandata mandatory for FDA. And now the NIA Essential, which is the first of your lineup of three pumps that you plan for, that is with the FDA for 510K clearance. Can you explain what this clearance is and what that will unlock? Yeah, the, the clearance means that the authority or the, the um, food, food and Drug Administration has um, um, reviewed our documentation, our technical file, and released our product for um, um, for the supply to um, to United States, so that we can bring our um, device into into the market of uh, United States. And uh, for us, of course, this is okay. um, very important because uh, many other countries in the world. Um, are accepting this standard as well as a high quality standard. And so therefore um, we are looking to get that FDA approval soon. Okay. Like I said, there, there's a lineup of three. I want to focus on the NIA Essential first. Mm -hmm. And I know that you have one on you. Can you show it to us for who's, who's watching, but also explain it to us in a way so that our listeners who can't see it uh, can also understand what it looks like. So um, what do you see here? I'll show that to you here. So this is our this is our pump, and you see here now already the coupled pump. So you have the um, our we have a two part system. So it consists of a of a cover, and it consists of a, a disposable. And I think you have already showed that in an earlier in an earlier uh, video. Um, so what we have here is the combined system. So this is the, the insulin patch pump um, with the with the adhesive in white, and you can see the the LED user interface uh, blinking blue. Great. And then how, how would you compare its size to something, let's say Omnipod, which some people may, uh, it's really the, uh, the only tubeless pump that's out there right now. Yeah. So it's, um, the volume, the, the device volume <clears throat> is the same, but this is 50% more insulin in size. So we have three ML. Um, the height is four millimeters higher so it's like a i believe it's like a first omnipod version yeah uh, but it's smaller in dimensions outer dimensions let's say the the height so the footprint yeah. is a little bit With, smaller mm. it's it's round uh, it's, so it's a circular shape which uh, allows us to have more uh, insulin on board than uh, than uh, yeah, com competitors pump so um, this is a very ideal shape to have um, a lot of insulin in a in a small volume so that's uh, that's why we have chosen a, a round and a circular system. And also the choice of uh, the round shape is also that we wanted to have the, the needle in the center. Um, because it, like this, this is, is well protected about um, the adhesive is really fixing the needle. So you don't risk that the, the needle is popping out. Yeah, that, that's super interesting because with Omnipod sometimes, especially in the warmer months, the cannula is right on the edge. And if that area is the, the, the area that's popping off, then yeah. you can, you know, 
be very close to it not working. But whereas it, it seems like something like this with it in the center, even if it is popping off a bit on some edges and you don't have time to put an adhesive on it yet, you'll be safe for a little bit. So, so I like that. That's pretty cool. Um, what about like the buttons on the device? Can you explain to us, um, how, if there are, but like what, how the buttons work and, and stuff like that. So we have, um, we have three buttons on, uh, on the top of the housing. So you can see two buttons, uh, uh um, um, I'm pressing right now. So if we press the button, then, uh, the, the system knows, uh, okay, the user wants to, to check the status, uh, for example here. And we have a third button in the middle. So the whole principle of having three buttons um, is to prevent um, to, pre to prevent errors or unintended um, um, yeah, button presses. So to be safe and uh, to make sure that the, the usage of this pump is uh, safe. So we have the three buttons. Usually you, you're using the side buttons and to connect and disconnect, you're using the, the, middle, the middle button. So the side buttons are for bolus. Yeah, so the side button are for bolus. And um, in, in addition to these buttons, we have a fibro and a, um, a buzzer. So the user will uh, feel and hear every button press. So with that, we can guide the user through a, a safe and effective um, usage of the device. Yeah, and, there, and there's also a light, a ring of light in the center that right now it's white. I've seen it blue, red, green. Can you explain to us what that light signifies or may signify as you're using it? Yeah, as, uh, as you can see, on, on, uh, we, we, don't, um, um, we, are, we are using these uh, um, LEDs to communicate to the user. So at the moment, the, the device is telling, yeah, I'm ready for pairing. I'm ready for connecting. So if I confirm, then the, the, um, the system gets connected and, and does, does the priming. As soon as the system is connected and ready to start, it goes into, in, into a, a red light status. Red light means the, the system is ready, but it's not running. So telling the user, be careful, the system is, is ready, but um, we did not start the, the device. And um, after we have started the device, we are in green um, LED modus, and green means always everything, everything okay, but uh, base rate is, is running, uh, or the, the bolus is delivered, uh, or is being delivered. Um, yeah, so uh, the green state is always a good status to be in. Okay, and I, I I know that there, or at least I've heard that there's no smartphone app that will connect to this, uh, at least the Nia Essential. There's that's not planned, uh, or maybe just for for setup, but not for the usage. So how would a user know how much insulin is on board, or yeah, be able to basically check that they that they're giving themselves, you know, the right amount of insulin. So, um, yeah, the idea with the NIA essential to the first pump is really that, you know, worldwide it's only 5% using an insulin pump of all people using basal and mealtime insulin. So, and the, the main issues are complexity. So pumps are considered very complex and expensive. Uh, so this first pump is really uh, to, to help people getting into insulin pumping and by we, we choose then to remove some of the complexity. And some of the complexity is really linked to a lot of options and, and messages and notifications and pairing and things like that. So we say, okay, let's remove. Okay, you will not have all the options, but you will have an easier product. So this one, you only um, use directly the buttons on the, on the body and you have start, stop and bolus. And uh, when you do a bolus, you, if you click three times and you decided before when you set up the product that one click is one unit, you will have the confirmation of three uh, sounds bzz, 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 and three vibrations. And if you, if you are able to see the pump, which is not always the case, you will see three, three turns as well. Yeah, it's good to have all those visual indicators for, I mean, people have different sometimes impairments, whether they ha they can't see as well or can't hear as well. Uh, and then, you know, if you're in a loud, noisy room, you have the visual and the vibrate, you know, cues. Can you tell us more about the, the parts that are being used? I know that some are reusable. Uh, kind of tell us about the different parts and, and maybe even get into kind of 
how how the the environmental impact of of using say a pump like this versus mm -hmm. another one yeah i mean the whole idea is to 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 was was really to reduce complexity but also reduce waste and reduce uh, therapy cost and uh, when it comes to waste of course we should be able to reuse as much as possible so in the cover um, that's the disposable, but yeah, the, the top part, um, you have all the, the electronics, uh, the, the, the LEDs, the Vibra, everything that can be reusable and everything that is in contact with the body or insulin is in the disposable. So that's a way really to, uh, reduce the waste, but also reduce the cost. And also the idea with having 3ml is, is the same idea because with 3ml we are able to extend the wear time and by that you are reducing the numbers of disposable you need and reducing the cost and the waste. Yeah, and uh, 3ml is 300 yeah. units. Um, when, when you're putting this on, I know that there's this like plastic piece in the center that's kind of jutting out. Can you show that to us and explain to us why that is and how that will work when you're putting it on the body? So um, um, what you see here is the needle, um, we call that the needle cover because um, the needle is already in place, the needle is fixed. And so I think that's a, that's a, it's a little bit of technical detail, but I, I like that very much because um, we have a, a steel needle coming directly from the insulin reservoir. You might that see, uh, see here, so it comes directly from the from the insulin reservoir and goes to the center of the of the device, and then uh, the needle stays already there. So we are not moving needles, and so this is this is for me very important because um, there is always a risk of um, of um, untied systems. So with that systems, we have a very safe uh, needle to insulin reservoir connection, and we don't need to uh, move needles. Um, so you see here the needle cover. Um, this is the, the small part you mentioned before, which is sticking out, and the, you can see that like, uh, like that here. And um, as soon as you are starting here the pump, the cover will then, um, so you, you place first the pump on the body, and this will press down the skin a little bit around this, um, this um, needle guard. And then once you decide to start the um, insulin pump, and you, you press the three buttons for three seconds, then the needle guard does uh, collapse. And that um, brings the, the skin and moves the skin over the needle. So we have, in fact, a little bit of, um, a different process to other systems where you shoot the needle into the subcutaneous tissue. We bring this, um, the skin over the needle. And this gives you a very smooth and a very, um, a, a very um, yeah, a smooth um, movement of the skin over the needle. It's like the infusion. Interesting. It's very much like the infusion sets. I mean, the the, um, the idea came from the, actually from the infusion set. We thought well, um, we should copy or we should we should somehow um, copy the the yeah most most proven technology. And I mean, this is a concept in the whole device. Um, just um, using the most proven technology, and we believe that steel needle limb sets um, have been used uh, hundreds of millions of times in the, in the market. So. This is a proven um, process and that's why we came up with that. Maybe also to mention the idea was also to have a straight uh, thin in. So this is an ultra thin um, pen needle. So it's one of the thinnest you can find in, in the pens. Uh, but we wanted a straight needle for the same reason as before that if you bump into something, uh, it's, it's always safe, that is always in. So to be able to have a straight fixed needle, we have this needle protection coming up, let's say. People always ask me, Justin, how do you keep on your diabetes technology? And it's a simple answer, skin grip. And that is why I partnered with them to sponsor today's episode. I use skin grips adhesive patches to keep my Dexcom and Omnipod extra secure, especially during the humid summer, swimming, cardio workouts, and they are a must pack on all of my vacations. Whenever I notice my tech beginning to peel off, I throw on a skin grip and I'm set. And I look good doing it because they come in a bunch of different colors and for a more subtle look, they come in skin tone and clear options. I prefer the colors though because I match them with my outfits. 
Skin Grip has patches for all CGMs, tubeless pumps, and infusion sets. They're latex-free, hypoallergenic, and easy to apply. As a Diabetic listener, you'll get 10% off your order. To grab some for yourself, check out that link in today's show notes, or go to SkinGrip.com and use code JUSTIN10. Now, back to the show. So, what is in your body and staying there is a 90-degree steel needle, very ultra thin needle, right? Not, not what you get from like the Omnipod, which is a, you know, a needle puts yeah. in a plastic cannula. Yeah. This is, so is there a difference in like comfortability using something like this or, or are there, is there work that you put into to make sure that this is not uncomfortable? I mean, we have chosen this ultra thin needle. It's a, it's a gauge um, 31 needle. Um, we have u- chosen this type of needle because um, from a from a certain diameter, um, uh, it's it's um, you you hardly will um, recognize that the the needle. And with all the other systems, you need quite a big needle to uh, to to penetrate first uh, the skin and then bring in the, the the soft cannula. We have chosen to go the other way around and um, I have chosen a, a very thin needle to reduce um, or. In our opinion, it's much more comfortable because you will, you will not feel the needle. You do, do not feel the, uh, the needle during wear time. And um, yeah, and it's much shorter because um, our needle is only six millimeters long uh, because it goes straight, straight um, to a six millimeters um, depth. And um, some other systems are going in an angle to this depth. So you need to have a long needle and a, and a thick needle. So we, we have chosen a small needle and a short needle. Yeah. But to compare it, I know you are using Omnipod, for example. So this is less than half the size of that. Of the diameter. Of the diameter. So I, I believe oh, that wow. you, you feel uh, when you're inserting the needle, but maybe it's not a pain. But this one you don't feel. It's really super thin. Oh, very cool. How long is this going to last? I believe you said it's three days. But with 300 units, uh, uh, personally, I don't come close to using 300 units in three no. days. I would I would hope that it lasts longer. Are you planning to bring a longer wear time, bring a smaller pump? Longer wear time. What, what does that I look mean, like? I mean, to reduce the the, okay. the therapy cost and and also the waste, it's really to increase the wear time. So mm-hmm. we we have Omnipod as a predicate device for the FDA, uh, FDA application, and that's why we have three days. Uh, but then, of course, the de- the device is designed for up to 10 days, but maybe let's say we are willing for seven days at least. Okay. And, you know, there's so many other pumps on the market today that have automated insulin delivery. And I, and I know that the Nia Essential on launch, that, that version won't have it. Who do you see this pump for? Uh, it's really there are many people that that understand the benefits of the pump and maybe already tried it but find it too complex because there are just too th- many things to to learn and so this is the first baby step to for these I mean they are coming from MDI absolutely this is a, a, a smart pan on your body but the benefit with uh, a good basal rate and, and to be able to bolus because, for example, many people are still embarrassed to bolus um, uh, publicly. So here you can bolus through the, the clothing, right? So it's really the, the starter pump, let's say. And hopefully, I mean, in a dream world, everyone should use the best AID system. But today, there are very, very few actually using that. So this is the first step. And maybe when they feel more comfortable and know how we're feeling and replacing the system and all this basic stuff, they can add some complexity with the algo, et cetera. Mm. I mean, it's, it's, it's planned as a first step um, that, we, that we have first this, um, the, the essential. And then in a second step, we... We add then with the advanced, we add then uh, AID capabilities. So and that's that's very clear at the way to go. It's just for us uh, to do that in certain steps and not all at once. Do you have any idea how long it will be um, until the essential comes out? Any any sort of timeline or or expectation with the FDA of when we could see this, at least in the U- the US? 
Yeah, we are. I mean, the the whole team is working very hard to get it to get it um, onto the U.S. market uh, market next year. So um, we really hope um, to to receive the the approval by the end of the year and having um, it on the U.S. market next year. So that's our goal. Why did you decide to start with the U.S.? I think it's two, it's two re- there are two reasons. Um, when we started the process like three years ago, there was a shift in the in the regulations in Europe. Um, and there was a, a lack of notified bodies, actually. Uh, so lack of organization that could help us doing the CE mark. Uh, so we didn't have an option. And at the same time, of course, U.S. market is the biggest market. It's 50% of the world market. So it's also a logic reason to start there. But now it's it actually uh, Europe is back on its feet and there are available uh, notified bodies and we have one now, we have a good one. So we initiated that process as well. Okay, that's, that's fantastic. So the, your next pump that you plan to bring after Essential is the knee advanced and the, this brings connectivity to CGM uh, and, an, and an app, right? It, does this pump, do you plan for this pump to bring automated insul- insulin delivery with connection to CGM? Yes, it will be. Absolutely. So so the, the, the it's the same physical pump as the Nia Essential. Uh, we will work on, we know that the size, the height is very important, right? So we have plans to reduce it in, in height a little bit. Um, but otherwise, it's the same physical pump. Uh, and then we add an app which is, of course, uh, connecting the, with the CGM and the pump and the algo. So it will be the ID system. Okay. Have you looked into any algorithms that already exist that are, you know, out there for people to take? There's Tide Pool Loop, which uh, the, the new Twist insulin pump has adopted. Tide Pool Loop wants people to take their algorithm. They're willing to work with companies. <laughs> Uh, have you considered Tide Pool Loop or are you trying to do some sort of proprietary algorithm? Absolutely, we have considered. I mean, we are in, a, in, in discussion as well with, um, uh, with Tide Pools and, and, and others. But of course, Tide Pool is, uh, uh, is a very important um, uh, partner. Yeah. And also maybe say and, that we are expert within uh, mechanical and electronical mm-hmm. uh, devices. And we are not software developers, so of course here we will partner, or we are go, we are uh, currently in negotiation with partnering. So absolutely use something good that already exists, and Tide Pool is one of the better one, I think. Yeah, and there's also you know the DIY community has a few other apps, Open APS, I APS, A APS for Android. Yeah. Would you consider looking into algorithms that aren't necessarily cleared by the FDA like Tidepool is, but working with DIY to bring a, an algorithm to get FDA clearance with your pump, something like IAPS? I would say um, we are too small to do multiple things. Uh, so we, sh- we will go with one which uh, we can have an approval for. Um, as quick as possible. Yeah. Yeah. And that's at the moment, um, of course, um, algorithm which, which are already uh, in process or already approved. So um, I think the focus for us is, is uh, yeah, as Anna said, we are a small company, so uh, we need to focus on uh, the companies which can help maybe us to do the registration instead of helping us, uh, us helping the, the company to do the registration. But I mean, the functionality will be, will be very similar. So, um, it, it's going to be an ACE pump. So I'm mm. And an ACE pump is a pump that is interoperable, yes. right? Is that yes. so from, with algorithm? Absolutely. Yes. And from that step, if you if we have once the, uh, they are connected to one algorithm, there might be um, easy possibilities to connect with further um, further algorithms. But I think the first one is the is the important step that uh, the authority does accept our system together with an algorithm. Okay. And then the next step, and I think what many people are excited for is, is this all in one device that takes away the need for having a pump and a CGM as separate technologies, have one device on you. You mentioned that you plan to integrate a CGM 
that not necessarily creating, I think you said earlier, not necessarily creating your own, but integrating one that exists. What does that look like? Is, does that mean you're talking to companies out there that already make CGM and looking to implement those into your device? Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's what we are doing. Because, um, I mean, for the, the original idea of PharmaSense was to, um, to have, um, um, to have this unique insert, um, with this unique insert, uh, inserter mechanism, um, we need to have small sensors, um, which, which, um, need to be, um, yeah, which we need to be able to place into a needle, into a small needle and a thin needle, thin needle. And, um, for that reason, we have, um, decided to, um, develop first our own technology. But nowadays, the, the technologies are so small, the sensors are so small that we can integrate uh, existing technologies into our system. We have already, um, yeah, we have already done some tests on that. And, uh, there is, there is technologies around which we could in, uh, integrate into our system. And so that's the reason why we are now looking out and, uh, um, reaching out to, um, sensor companies and to, um, to partners, um, if they would um, be interested in partnering with us and helping us with the integration of our sensor technology. Yeah. When it comes to putting in a CGM sensor on this device, how do you envision that being inserted? Is it all in one needle or is, are there going to be separate sites for this? Uh, well, all the existing technologies, all the existing sensor on the market uh, is using one insertion and then they are leaving the filament inside the body. With with this, uh, it will be two. So it will be our infusion needle and their sensor. But there are actually, uh, there is actually new technology. So there is new technologies where there is a combination of the infusion needle and a sensor all in one. And of course, from a patient perspective, this is the preferred way. Then you have just one micro needle, let's say instead of two. Wow, that's fascinating. What obstacles are there to overcome when it comes to bringing an insulin pump injection close to the site where a CGM sensor is? There are, well, there are a couple of things, and um, um, there are a couple of things that needs to be handled by the sensor, but all mainly all of the modern sensors have these characteristics, let's say. Uh, but we also know that they, you need some kind of distance in depth or uh, sidewise uh, between the infusion uh, and the sensor measurement. Um, but there are a lot of publications around this and there are a lot of clinical trials already shown that this is possible. So we are now... Uh, planning our own clinical trial, hopefully end of this year, beginning of next year, where we have in our device uh, a sensor. And it's, we are not saying yet the, 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 the different measurements, but it's a co the combined device that we will try. Oh, wow. And you know, there is a, um, the, of course, the, the insulin delivery might impact the, um, the, the sensor. For a, for a certain time, if you, if you have a, um, um, a big bolus closed in, in close proximity to the to the uh, CGM sensor, then of course there will be an impact on that. But as we control in, in one device, we can control both. We control can control the the deli insulin delivery and the measurement, and that gives us the, the opportunity to manage that. Even if there is influence, we can manage that influence, and uh, we have already seen that in an internal test and of course we need to we need to prove that further but um we can we, we are convinced or we are sure we can we can uh, have that insulin delivery and uh, cgm measurement in close proximity have there been any clinical trials for your current nia essential not not clinical you a lot of user tests but not with the infu infusion of insulin we have done 15 uh, user studies, uh, but we have not done a clinical study yet, because the clinical study is basically not needed for the for the um, um, approval or uh, submission mm -hmm. or for the registration, I have to say. Um, but um, as Anna mentioned, uh, we are now planning to do um, to do a, a clinical trial soon, and this covers, of course, aspects from the essential as well. Okay, and so what is the next step 
for after 510k clearance from the FDA is is that the next step that like how do you go from F10k clearance to people are using this yeah that's a bit that's a bit um the that's an important question because um we are at the moment looking for a partner helping us with that because we are as Anna said, we are good in, in development. I think we are very specialized in electromechanical system, uh, especially insulin, insulin uh, system development. And um, but we are we do not have the, the access to the market. So we need to have a partner with access to the market, and that's what we are reaching out to. So we are at the moment reaching out to companies and partners which could potentially help us to reach out to this um, and to this to to these users. And I mean, this is this is a big task. So um, uh, it's not easy for a small company to reach the users. So this is why we are uh, partnering for that, and we are looking at. So in parallel, let's say with finding the the best uh, commercial partner for the essential, it's really focusing, <clears throat> sorry, on the development of the two others, mm -hmm. and the maybe the biggest step will be this clinical trial for the first um, sen uh, combined device. What do you think a device like the Nia Signature, the device that brings in your CGM and pump, how does that help? people out there what what problems is this is this helping with yeah maybe i can start i mean one thing is to have only one device on your body right uh, instead of two um, and also having one partner one one company to talk to that is in charge in charge and have the full responsibility for the whole thing uh, because sometimes um, now people are a little bit squeezed between companies because is it the arrow of the device, the sensor, or is it the pump or is it the algo or where is the problem? And also having one reimbursement or a coverage uh, issue, you know, everything is one. And also having this um, weekly routine that you can establish that, I don't know, every Thursday night, I don't know, I change my device. Um, but then, then it's also a, a cost perspective because by combining things in an AID system, you're also reducing cost. Uh, the only thing we are actually throwing away with a, a signature when it comes to the sensor is a small filament, which is, I don't know, 30 cents or something. The small filament is thrown away. Everything else is either reused, like the electronics and the reusable part, or a part of the um, pump disposable, like the inserter or uh, the adhesive. And also the whole chain of, of production, sterilization, transportation, storage, dis uh, distribution, everything is a, is a huge co cost reduction and waste reduction. So it depends from what angle you are looking at it, but I think from all angles, it's, it's, a, it's a win. Yeah, I think we're heading into a super exciting time with the compounding of devices, the ability to uh, Dexcom release like direct to watch or, or is releasing the ability for a CGM to go to the Apple Watch. Maybe one day all you're wearing is a watch, one device. The device has the ability to bolus right yes. on it and, you know, no more phone, no more two devices that, you know, one could have issues uh, so, you know, the simplicity sounds very appealing. Uh, it, it, thank you guys so much for coming on the podcast. This was so exciting. And I, I'm really looking forward to to, to watching Nia grow and, and hopefully come to market and, and try it myself. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you very much Justin. for having us. Thanks for tuning in. Nia is an exciting product and I'm excited to see more like it. Maybe other companies will get in this game and try to implement both CGM and pump together. I know that I would love just an all-in-one device. What about you? Let us know in the comments on YouTube. And if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the page. I've got new episodes of this podcast releasing every Monday and new videos come out on Fridays. So go check out the YouTube if you're listening on podcast platforms. I've got links to my YouTube and all social accounts in the show notes. I'm Justin and I'll see you next week.